Dudorinos and welcome to the Game Addicts Podcast. Today's podcast within a podcast. You can hear this audio on the Journey into Comics feed for right now. I'll get to that in just a minute. We're going to be talking about some gaming news and events. Not a lot. We're just going to brush it over. I'm your player one, Brando, and joining me here today is the podfather, Nate Phillips. Hey, player two signing in. Brando, you will not even believe I'm playing so many video games. You're playing a lot. I have too many games. Oh, bro. It's it's unfortunate how much shit I started that I don't know if I'm going to get through because <laughs> like, OK, so we got the PS5 for Christmas. I regaled that tale on a, a mm-hmm. JIC a couple weeks ago, and then it was an amazing, beautiful moment. And whatnot. Uh, Ollie and I both have our own controller. We have the PlayStation. Did I tell that story about the PlayStation controller charger? I had it shipped to the wrong address and the address I had it shipped to was not an address. So they refunded me. <laughs> so I had to like rebuy it. They said it was just delayed the the getting of the item. Anyways, oops. <laughs> uh, we've been paying for a while now, and it's it, monthly. Stupidly, I need to go bite the bullet and hit the CD keys up and actually take care of it the right way. But we pay for PlayStation Plus. Yeah, right. And with PS Plus, especially on the PS Five, it is amazing because they're like, hey, not only are we going to give you all the PS Plus options that are free this month. We're also going to give you a bunch of stuff from the PS4 library that you can just have. Mm-hmm. You want it? It's yours. Just have it, man. And, of course, I'm like, well, I never got to play God of War. Dah. You know, and then they're like, hey, free game, Dirt 5. I'm like, I fucking love racing. Dah. And then they're like, here are all these other fun games. I'm like, put it in my library. Put it in my library. Put it in my library. Because you don't have to all download all of it right now, right? You know? mm-hmm. So then this happened. We had one of our friends stop by. He was like, hey, have you guys ever played Horizon Zero Dawn? And I was like, no. I mean, my friends have talked about it a little bit, but I don't really know anything about it. Watch trailer, man. Watch trailer. So we watched the trailer, and I was like, holy shit, we need this game. Like, I actually am on board. We're going to have to pick this game up. So I go on to the digital thing because I'm like, you know, we'll just get it digitally. I'm kind of into that right now. It saves on the collection side of it, you know, because it's hard to for space and whatnot. And it says you can buy it for $20. Or it's free to play and stream on PS Now. So I'm like, PS Now, what are you, baby? And then it's like, hey, by the way, if you get PS Now, it's like PS Plus, but it's more just game-based, right? It's not just about playing online versus other people. You can not only download the game to your console, you can just stream it so you don't have to take up space on your shit. And it's incredible. So we downloaded it. I have a game save on my account. Ali has a game save on his account. We're playing in kind of two different like linear paths. He's a little bit further ahead of me. But I love it. It's really good. So that's happening. Also, Spider-Man Miles Morales on PS5 because I got to fucking beat that eventually. I've got a coworker who is browbeating me every time. I say, Have you beat Miles Morales yet? And I'm like, shut the fuck up. I'm almost there. I'm like, like, I'm like, like 72 percent, you know? <laughs> So that's awesome. That, that, that That's great news that you have discovered a whole new level of PlayStation that's been around for a couple of years. <laughs> well, it's just, it's, you, 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 you. when I was a little bit younger, Brando, my thing was like, if I want a game, I want to fucking have the physical copy. Cause fuck you. I don't want to, what if the internet dies forever, you know? And like, I don't have the game. <laughs> it just wake up and it's dead. <laughs> yep. Yeah, it's just no more internet folks. Sorry. We go to a physical we all have to go to the physical funeral of the internet. <laughs> oh, yeah, they bury that shit. And all you hear is... Uh, so, no, I mean, I tell you what... I just it, slobbered on myself. Oops. <laughs> it's really cool that you found some stuff to play. Um, I never did finish Horizon myself. I had an issue with the control. Uh, controls were a bit funky to me. Uh, but the new one's coming out here in just a few weeks. Uh Forbidden West. Forbidden West. And uh, 
know, PlayStation's out there. Okay, so there's a lot of weird stuff going out there in the gaming world. Acquisition, Tell us about it, Brando. Acquisitions abound. So people have money to spend, and they're buying shit up in droves. They, they, they are, and and, and it's not. So it all started with uh, Take Two, who uh, they own Two uh, K Games and Rockstar. Well, now they own Zynga, and they bought Zynga for like twelve, thirteen billion dollars. Most of those of you who don't know, Zynga is a massive mobile gaming company. And they massive. did yes, and they did that to so that way they could have a gateway to put their IPs that they are, that they have and try to find a way to get those on the mobile to access a new uh, financial market for them. Well, then it's about a few weeks later. The biggest acquisition in video game history was announced when Xbox says they are going to acquire Activision Blizzard for nearly seventy billion doll hairs. Which gives Damn. which gives them the ownership of Call of Duty, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater, Guitar Hero, World of Warcraft, Diablo, and even Crash Bandicoot. Damn. Battle of the Dragon. They own that stuff. Man, it, it's all theirs now. Uh they have since doubled down and said that Call of Duty will continue to be on other platforms after the current agreements because there was like is Call of Duty going to be exclusive to Xbox from now on it kind of could be um, they've already said that uh, you know um, Xbox bought Bethesda which I thought that was the biggest thing uh, that was going to happen in our lifetime as far as acquisitions and it, it's not um, but the next Elder Scrolls and the next Fallout and Starfield those are going to be Xbox exclusive they're not coming to PlayStation so you want those you got to either get them on PC have a good PC to play them or have an Xbox. Uh, but it doesn't end there because then the week after Xbox says, we're buying Activision for lots of monies. And PlayStation, Sony comes down and said, we're buying Bungie for nearly $4 billion, three and a half billion. Bungie, they're the people who... Halo, Halo, Halo. They Halo, made Halo. Halo, 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 Halo. Holy fuck, Halo, Halo, Halo. They, they're, the, they're, they're the dev team that created Halo uh, Halo 1 through Reach. So that's 1, 2, 3, ODST and Reach. It, like, like maybe. Halo Wars as well, right? Halo, Halo uh, Wars. Maybe. Sure, why not throw them in there? Fuck it, I'm going to go look. Throw them in there. I I, I don't know. I'll, I'll, see, he's not even going to use the internet this time. He's actually just going to go get his copy. Look at this flex. Anyways, Sony says they're buying Bungie. And they initially, they, they said, hey... The stuff isn't gonna. It's gonna be independent, and it's gonna still be on all of its platforms. Bungie did not have a hand in it. It was Ensemble Studios with Microsoft. On Ense- Halo Wars. So, like, basically, it was an uh, it was an ensemble of a bunch of different developers. <laughs> that was a bad joke. Anyways, it's okay. It landed. Ah, a lot of weird moves going on, and I wonder if there's not going to be more on the horizon because, no pun intended, the ah. <laughs> <laughs> because I kind of feel like okay, so the so so the Activision deal is happening, and because of what's going on at Activision, because of all of the uh, uh, behind the scenes stuff, lawsuits, and uh, uh, lawsuits from people and the state of California due to um, just harassment. There might have, I'm not sure what all's going on. There's a lot of different stuff, and it really, for okay, think about it like this. They were willing to try to get out of this thing. <laughs> it's like to let somebody else buy this thing and take it over. That's how bad off it is. And it was, from what I understand, Xbox was only one suitor who was talking to. There, there, there were other people talking to him. Uh, we're just living in a weird multiverse, like we said earlier, Brando. It's, kind of. Spyro and Crash Bandicoot, which have been essentially PlayStation exclusive since their inception, have now been purchased by Xbox. And Halo, which is the flagship of all that is Microsoft and all that is the Xbox brand, is now in control by motherfucking Sony. Uh, this is not, not not true on that. So Bungie doesn't have anything to do with Halo anymore. I know, but they, I'm saying the spirit thereof. They gave that that baby up for adoption, or, 
Or they left the house. Well, they and sold it. Uh, well, okay, so Xbox bought Bungie for like twenty to thirty million dollars in two thousand, and they developed the first Halo and all those other ones, and then they left uh, Xbox and became independent, and they launched a deal with Activision. <laughs> That's what is hilarious. So they 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 launched a partnership with Activision, and they released the first Destiny. Uh, they ended that partnership. And they kept control of the Destiny IP, and they released Destiny 2 and its subsequent stuff, and it's still an active game. People are still playing it. And now you have Xbox, who is going to control, like, who is going to control the most played multiplayer shooter game, Call of Duty. And you're going to have Sony, who's going to have the next whatever is it going to be Destiny 3 or whatever they're doing. They're now. I don't think either one of those are going to become 100% exclusives. I think they're going to have incentives. Like, is is Call of Duty going to be free on Game Pass day one? Yes. The whole reason why they purchased Activision Blizzard is to get all these IPs. This is how Xbox is going to win this war. This 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 war. They are never, and you can count Brando on this, and, and I'll come back and say I'm wrong. They will never outsell the PlayStation. They're Can't. not. They're not going to do it because uh, number one of of just brand loyalty, but also also due to their strategy isn't that anymore. So the Xbox 360 sold 85 million units. Congratulations! That is the best selling Xbox console to date. It got outsold by the PlayStation 3 by 2.5 million units. That is the worst-selling PlayStation console. Yep. Xbox got beat by the worst-selling PlayStation console. The PS4 is setting at a very healthy and comfy 115 or 17 million consoles sold. Damn. The PS4 is now the number four best-selling console or gaming device of all time. Do you do you want to know what the other ones are? I'm going to guess it's a Nintendo NES. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. Well, let's talk about this in just a second. Xbox doesn't care about that because they're focusing on Game Pass because their goal is to get as many IPs as they can get the, underneath their house and they don't have to make deals for it. It's in their house. And that way, the next TV you buy is going to have an Xbox app. And all you need is this and an oh internet. Oh, my God. All you and need. And now the Xbox is in every home in the world. Yep. Through Game Pass streaming, very similar to your PlayStation Now, Xbox is on every TV, and all you got to do is sign up. You have access to all these games. Halo's day one. Forza's day one. Call of Duty's day one. Maybe even a World of Warcraft is going to be on there day one for new stuff, new updates. All for the meager, all for the meager price of currently $15. It could go up because, I mean, the value of what the, that's what their plan is. So now let's shift. That's Xbox's plan. Sony is doubling down on hardware, and they're going to be pushing the PS5, as well as their new PSVR 2, which they've unveiled uh, like at the beginning of the month. So let's talk about those sales. PlayStation is doing pretty good with their PS4 sales. They're, they're, they're very happy. The Xbox has discontinued the, the Xbox One brand last year. They're done making them to focus on making the new ones as well as their new as their, as their new focus. The PlayStation has announced they are going to be making at least another million PS4s so that you can pretty much count those as sold because there's going to be another generation of gamers who are not ready to make the next-gen leap because they have a library full of PS4 games to buy. Worldwide, another million. Okay. So, we are going to go dive in deep, just a minute, to the video game console sales chart. Because this is very interesting about who is where. Because because I've already told you the best selling um, Xbox is eighty five, and the and the PS three, which is the worst selling of of that, 
is 87. I already told you that the PS4 is like 115, um, something like that, 117. Yeah, PS4 is, is 116.9, so 117. Let's just call it 117. Are you ready for the results? The number one selling video game console of all time is the PlayStation 2. 155 million. That makes tons and tons of sense. Coming in at second is a handheld. It's the Nintendo DS family. The whole family. The, the original, the light, the DSi, the DSi XL. Not the 3DS. That's DSi a, XL Plus. XL Plus. Uh, so just the original DS. 154 million. So damn near close. A pretty distant ways away. At 118. The Game Boy and Game Boy Color. The, damn. The PS4 is about ready to pass that. If you can find them anywhere. So number one, PS2. Number two, the DS. Number three, the Game Boy, Game Boy Color. Number four is the PS4. Do you want to know what rounds out the top five? Yeah, tell me. T the Nintendo Switch. Interesting. It's already up there. The Nintendo Switch just recently passed the Wii and the original PlayStation and is now sitting at 103.5 million consoles sold. That counts as the original the light and the OLED model. The OLED models already, or the light has already sold, outsold the Wii U wow. <laughs> on its own, just the light. And uh, they at, they have now broken their, because the Switch is a handheld, but also a hybrid. So it's like it's a home console. They've outsold their, their most highest selling home console with the Wii. And they're not Damn. done. They're not done. The, the Nintendo just had a direct the other day. Did you watch any of that? Did you see any of that? No, sir. I fill me in. Okay, so uh, brand new Kirby coming out, and it's like Kirby meets our meets Mario Odyssey. Okay. So you Kirby can like more open world. Yeah, more bigger spaces. It's three D. He can he can suck down broken down cars and drive around as a big Kirby car thing. That's awesome. He can suck in a vending machine. You can hobble around as a vending machine as he shoots mm. stuff out of his. <laughs> was not, it's silly and stupid uh, but a new Kirby uh, Splatoon 3 coming this summer a sequel to Wii Sports is coming called That's awesome. Nintendo Switch Sports and uh, this will have uh, tennis, soccer badminton, volleyball and bowling and there's going to be um, uh, there's going to be two updates to it uh, throughout the year so soccer you you actually do use your hands for the soccer but then there's a mode where you just do like a kick challenge uh so it's not like an actual game of soccer you're doing kick and you can strap it to your leg and use that to kick and then there's going to be an update where you, i guess you can use that for the whole experience for for soccer and then uh, in the fall we're supposed to be getting the golf update where you get to play another round of of of, 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 of like motion control golf so pretty interesting there. Uh, I I was kind of shocked that they're doing it, but also why not? <laughs> this is a that is a series that was really high selling. It was it was almost concluded with like seventy percent of the original Wii sales. We are getting a sequel to Mario Strikers from the GameCube, Mario Strikers Battle League, coming out June tenth, and we're getting some ports. We're getting a port of No Man's Sky. We're getting a port of Star Wars: The Force Unleashed. We're getting a port of Portal One and Two. That's we're, awesome. We're we're getting ports of Klonoa, door door to Phantom Isle and Klonoa Two. That's that was out of left field. Uh, we're getting uh, remakes of Advanced Wars One and Two in April. We're getting Fire Emblem Warriors. So it's Fire Emblem meets Dynasty Warriors uh, in June. And uh, I think. Uh, Metroid Dread's getting a free update where you get uh, insta death if you get hit. Good luck with that for all you um, people out there who enjoy just torture. But the biggest one, okay, so the big rumor was going to be Mario Kart Nine. Sure. And Mario Kart's <clears throat> not Nine is not happening yet. Instead, they announced new DLC for Mario Kart Eight. They are releasing forty-eight new courses. 
to Mario Kart 8. Well, they're not new. They are remastered courses from all the past Mario games, from the original all the way up to Mario Kart 7. Damn. And they're going to release in waves. I think it's $25 uh, for the pack. Or if you subscribe to the uh, Nintendo Switch Online expansion pack, which that is 50 bucks a month that gets you access to everything that's in the original online, which is NES, Super NES, and, and the ability to play online. Uh, the expansion pack gives you access to the S64 games they have on there, Sega Genesis games they have on there, some, um, oh, uh, what's that, Animal Crossing stuff, and if you subscribe to the online expansion pass, you get this DLC for free. Whoa, that's awesome. The first pack of these uh, of these new uh, tracks will be, uh, they, they're going to launch in six batches of eight, maps each and the first one comes out on march 18th until the end of 2023 so this whole year and the whole next year we're going to be getting intermittent uh releases of new tracks the first wave will include from the Wii, coconut mall in 64 uh chaco mountain from mario kart tour tokyo blur and other ones <laughs> they didn't give you other ones uh but i th- some people there there's be there's some mixed feelings about this because they want their Mario Kart 9 and, and instead they're they're doing with courses what they did with Smash Brothers where they just keep adding characters and adding characters and adding characters to the point of any new Smash game that comes out it's going to be a letdown because it's not going to have as many characters. But now we're getting on top of all the tracks that we already had from the original Mario Kart that also included the DLC for that original Mario Kart 8. Now we're getting 48 new tracks. Nate, do you have to dust off some of your chops? Got to actually get it for the Switch first of all, and then once we get it for the Switch, you know, the no holds barred. I'm going back to the old school style of just kicking everybody's ass and taking all the names because uh, I love racing and Mario Kart. I just talked about somebody the other day. I was like, you know, that's my shit. Brando, you remember? Villain's gone. Come on, man. You at one point held the world record for Moo Moo Meadows. Uh, Moo Moo Meadows, not medals. <laughs> you metal Moo Moo Meadows. You you broke the record for Moo Moo Meadows with a broken freaking neck. <laughs> I did. I did that. Um, I think it's cool because save Mario Kart Nine for the next console, where you're really going to try to innovate and do something new to the game. And if you know that's not going to happen for the next couple of years, do this. Because there's going to be people who want it. There are going to be people who want Mario Kart. Well, but, plus, bringing all those old tracks into the modern mm-hmm. allows for people to relive the nostalgia and get a little taste of the Mario Kart that they want. Because ultimately, that's what they want. They want more courses. Mm-hmm. They don't necessarily want a new game totally re-innovated with all new everything. They want more of the same with a lot more of the shit they love and and really one of the best parts about the mario kart 8 experience on the wii u was going back and playing all those old courses totally upgraded to modern looks and just being like oh my god i remember racing this on the n64 or you know you said chaco mountain and i'm just like oh my god those fucking boulders get away from my life i hate those goddamn boulders they always would kill me i also forgot to say xenoblade chronicles 3 Got it. Yeah, they are. They're coming out this year. Swing. All these games are coming out this year. By the way, these are all games coming out this year. We didn't get updates on Breath of the Wild two or Metroid uh, Prime four. So none of no, uh, and all, most of the stuff that got announced is either getting released between now and summer, with with some of them twinkling into like uh, uh, September or something like that. And that's the way Nintendo likes to do it. They said, "Here, we're doing all this stuff." And it's coming to you. They have sold, was it 103? It, yeah, uh, 103.5 million consoles and still have at least two more full years of content coming out of games. Then, And that's not, oh, MLB The Show is coming to the Switch this year. That's cool. And so MLB The Show has historically been exclusive to the PlayStation. Starting last year, because this was the deal they struck with the MLB to continue. Sony still makes it. Sony San Diego still makes the show. But last year it went to the Xbox for the very first time. This year it comes to the Switch for the first time, and you can play 
online with people on other consoles. Fully cross plat. And if you're on another console, like if you're playing Road to the Show on PS5, you can take that progress with you on the Switch. That's cool. I thought that was amazing. San Diego has been doing stuff in sports games, like being able to upload your own tracks using a using a uh, USB and, and integrating those into the game that a certain maybe wrestling game could be doing because something I found out not that long ago, one reason why we don't have all the wrestling themes that we want is that the company actually has to license those from the rest from WWE. WWE just doesn't give them to them. They have to license those tracks individually. That's so dumb. It is dumb and and, and, and ridiculous. Uh, and on the on the older consoles, it was easy to do custom. But, but, we cannot do it yet. But uh, Nintendo, I feel, is riding high. Will I think Nintendo is going to pass the PS4 with the Switch? The Switch possible with how quick it's moving. Well, okay, so the PS4. Let let's say the PS4 only sells another million and it puts it at one seventeen or one eighteen, and it does pass the Game Boy. We are at one hundred three million for the Switch with another two years of content to go before they even think about releasing another one, a new Switch or a new console. I think the Switch will get over one hundred and twenty million sold because the OLED is still brand new. And we still are having, like, it's not as hard to get as the PS5 or the Xbox Series X. Because um, more than once have I been able to see, oh, hey, uh, this console's in stock on Amazon or Best Buy. And I've been able to go and add it to my cart. Like, for the, for the Switch OLED. It, 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 it does sell out, but it doesn't sell out within minutes like the other ones. Which means that the Switch is nearing the end of its life, but it's still selling out. And I think it's going to continue worldwide to be able to carry that forward. And I think it's going to be the number four selling game console, maybe even the number three. And I think it has deserved it. I think the Switch is a home run for them, and they would be stupid not to do another iteration because the Switch has opened up in a market for this because with the Steam Deck coming out. Have you seen anything about the, about the Steam Deck? Similar, right? It, it, it is a handheld game mode that connects to your Steam library. It can also connect to any other PC game library that you have, including Rockstar, Epic Games, and you. And there's certain some games are not going to be compatible, but but a lot of games are, and you're going to be able to take those PC games with you on the go. And the I think it's obvious. With where they're at, they found this niche of not being as powerful as a PS5. It doesn't need to be. It needs to be right there in the pocket. Just right. And that's all it needs to be. Absolutely. I'm super excited for what's to come down the line. I am actually super excited for the show. Um, I I did buy the show 20. It was my very first one. And I loved the hell out of it. And I'm actually going to be purchasing the new one. Um, the, the new one, I'm going to be buying it from Best Buy. There is a steel book that it's a little Very bit, nice. it's a little bit more. I think it's $85 and you get the PS4 disc and the PS5 download and you can cross play between the two. So I can play it on the PS5 in a living room. And if the kids want to hog the TV and watch Encanto and not talk about Bruno, then I could come in here to my little nook here on my gaming desk and got the PS4 down here and I can sit in here and you know hit some balls and 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 not chew tobacco because that's not what I do but like you know have some fun with it and um it's that game has become my new I don't know what to play game <laughs> like I, I I don't know what to play let's go swing some bats um there you go but yeah, no, it's super fun. There's lots, a lot of cool stuff coming down the pipeline. You're playing some cool stuff right now. I'm kind of yes, in. Be- I'm kind of in between. Um, I did do some uh, some cool stuff with my Wii U. I've been playing the Wii U a little bit. Um, I, I did get the Uncharted PS5, so I, I checked that out. It looks really super nice and slick. I, I've also been checking out um, some stuff for like some N64 emulation on my computer. 
uh, trying to get that working. And um, for, just as just quickly, you can use an Xbox an Xbox controller, but a cheaper a cheaper route is do the eight bit though, uh, Super Nintendo style. It, it's got all the buttons you need, and it connects to the PC like a charm. And uh, I, I've been used I've been using this to play N sixty four games, which uh, so I've been playing No Mercy or the No Mercy mod for WCW Feel the Bang, and I have to custom map the buttons for the No Mercy. Like I, I like I'm yeah. like okay so because it has the C buttons I, I I put two C buttons here and then two C buttons on the stick, and I'm like this is so weird. <laughs> that is weird. Uh, um, you can get USB as sixty four controllers and play, but I don't have that. I'm not gonna buy it. Um, but yeah, man, it's never a better time to be a gamer. And I wonder if more sales are going to come with, uh, or n- not just sales, but more uh, ac- acquisitions. Because I feel like besides the Activision thing, some of these companies uh, might not be doing so well money wise. Not that they're dying, but that they might be looking for somebody like a Sony or a Microsoft or somebody to kind of lift them up and help them out is because for sure. they haven't been able to release as many titles or uh, output during this era. And uh, that might help trigger a new, a resurgence of the wars, not the like, and who are the winners in the wars? The gamers, because both sides are going to be pushing out really cool stuff. You look really confused. Hold on. Okay. Okay. So I think that uh, just to, to piggyback of what you said a little bit, obviously the gamers win in the console wars always because they're they're it's like the wrestling wars. They're pushing each other to bring out better content to up their game to bring out the best in each other, uh, and not become stagnant and complacent and just satisfied with where you're at. And it's huge. It honestly is. I'm really looking forward to what we got coming from Sony. I'm excited for what Microsoft has obviously got going on. And then some of this information you just said about Nintendo and the Switch is just like, bring it to me. I'm super, super jazzed on it. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to what's coming out soon. I look forward to uh, continuing my adventure through some of the PlayStation 5 and 4 catalog that I didn't get to uh, play. You've definitely got some catching up to do and nothing but time, my friend. Take it easy. Don't rush. Don't feel like you need to rush out and get the new Horizon until you're done with the other one. Oh, yeah, I'm not even going to worry about the second one until I know that I even like the first one. <laughs> right. Well, uh, but I mean, it, it's going to be there. It's not going anywhere. Uh, another game to check out on the PS5, if you ever get an opportunity to, to down the line in several months, in fact, wait a while till it's on sale because it's a damn good and a beautiful game, Ghost of Tsushima. Oh, I have the PS4 version. I can just upgrade. There you go. Uh, it's, it's not as cheap as an upgrade. I, I, I will tell you that. It's not as cheap. Okay, whatever. But eventually it will be. I'm 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 just saying it uh it's not as cheap as the Uncharted but which which was like ten bucks, or it's not as cheap as the FF seven one, which was free. <laughs> but okay. that's gonna do it for the game addicts portion of this podcast within a podcast. Thank you guys so much for checking out the Game Addicts Podcast and all those places that are out there, Game Addicts Play on social medias and and on YouTube. Check us out there. In the meantime, until next time, I'll see you later. And we're going to head it back to the other podcast. Something's <laughs> happening. I'm crawling. Whoa, whoa. Now, now I'm in the other window. I moved to the other window. And now you're back over there. And I don't know what's going on.